Welcome to the 103rd episode of the Supernatural Occurrence Studies Podcast. So damn paranormal. My name is Jason Knight, host of the show, and with me, as always, is... Oscar Spector. Producer extraordinaire and podcast co-host. Coast. 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 I like saying that. You like that? Huh? You like that? Yeah. Well, I just combine co and hosts and coast. Coast. That's why I said that. Co. All right. I combine words. You do combine words. Like Black Panther is Blanther. Blanther. Right. Blood what was this bloat? Bl- <laughs> oh, the blood oath whiskey. Yeah. That's what oh. We were talking about that. Should we talk about what we've been drinking? Well, I mean, I mean, bro. I'm dude. Hopefully, I could read my script. I hope you can. You've been. I don't know why. We're, it's like a race, and you really want to win. It's <laughs> you know, like, that's, that's what it feels like. It, so I, we've been drinking. Uh, we've been. <laughs> we've been drinking. We've been drinking. Wow. Basil Hayden's Caribbean Reserve Rye. Mm, it's very nice. It's. I actually don't like rye, but this makes it nice and sweeter. And yes, sweeter. it's uh, it's rye that's been aged in. Uh, rum barrels, and it's a limited run, mm-hmm. and it's probably my favorite thing in the world. Yeah. And just straight up, a little bit of ice. Yeah. You mix it with a little bit of Pepsi. I did because it's kind of hard to drink. Yeah, even, I'm gonna even regardless. Like I know I'm gonna feel like a fucking like sauced if I keep like drinking <laughs> it the way you are. Like, yeah. like, if I was just here to chill, I'd be all over it like you are. But like we got work to do. We got work. To do. <laughs> yeah. It, it's delicious. So, um, yeah. Yeah. Not bad. I can tell. <laughs> no, no, I'm good. You're getting that. There's a twinkle. Okay. We're, also drinking, we're also drinking peach mead. Peach mead. Listeners, you know, if you've been uh, keeping up with us the past couple episodes, we've been in a big mead kick. Yeah. Um, peanut butter and jelly mead. Oh, yeah. Peach mead, raspberry mead. Raspberry is next, isn't it? What is this one? That is a blackberry. Blackberry. Not blackberry is going to be nice. Oscar's pouring himself another one. You might, listeners, uh, you might that's, hear that's a difference true. in our sound quality. Yeah, I hope it's better. I do too. Yeah. So we splurged, mm-hmm. and we bought some like stage quality mics. Mm-hmm. So you're gonna hear uh, probably that my <laughs> well, little my little that? tap. Yeah. Because <laughs> sometimes so like, we can't like hide away and vape anymore. No. 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 Like, I mean, you. you Cause it, it sounds before, like a hurricane. Like, it'll sound like yeah. Should we give an example? Like a screeching, yeah. Oh, please, I want an example. Right Let's now. give an example. Yours is so much more louder. Is it really? Yeah. Yeah. The, so these mics. So, so we splurged a little bit. We wanted to try uh, get better sound quality. So we've got these uh, stage quality road mics uh, hooked up right now. I thought I was going to have time to soundproof the room because I got some soundproofing as well. Yeah. But my travel schedule this week with the new promotion was so insane. So is there a chance that the next show will sound even better? Yeah. Yeah, I'll have the, the soundproofing up by then. I thought I was going to be able to get it up tonight. I just I couldn't. I just didn't have the time. So it's not good, man. So hopefully these mics sound nice. Yeah. Maybe hear our voices a little bit differently. Maybe we're more <clears throat> rich. Maybe a little more. Well, at least more honest, because I don't think my voice is cut out for like broadcast. No, no, no. I mean, some voices are just not. You know, I'm not saying I'm not going to stop talking. I'm going to keep talking. But yeah. you know, I think that my voice maybe is a little too like weird. But I don't we'll think see. so. We'll see. I, don't know. I think you have a good mic voice. I think so. I do. I think I, I, think I trick people. No <laughs> just being so confidence in what I'm saying. I wonder if they hear your feet slide across the floor right now. Yeah, I was thinking that. I was trying to see if I could see the, the sound waves. Um, it picks up everything. These up mics everything. pick up. So you said something interesting. We did a test run on the mics yes. before we actually jumped down and started recording this episode. And uh, the sound of silence. Yeah. What does that sound like? Like that. There it is. A little like that. Yeah, I was thinking, I was saying earlier that, that we were hearing the ambient nothingness of the room. Right, and when you said that's the sound of silence, and I'm that's like, what oh, that Simon is... That's what Simon and are singing about. Yeah. It's just the ambient sound of the room. Yeah. Uh, it's picking up, it might pick up the uh, fans of our computers. Right. It might pick up just little things that we do, like if I fidget with a the bottle cap. The termite the table. Yeah. Or yeah. Whatever. But by next recording, I'll have the soundproof up. Yes. Anything that's shiny will be gone. Anything that's shiny. Yeah. So drywall, the the table. By the way, the Shining sequel came out. Doctor Sleep. I really want to see Doctor Sleep. I reread the book. 
I finished it two days ago. Yeah. Oh, uh, was Do- it Doctor Sleep? Yeah. Marge. What? Uh, Marge. The Hat. Oh, Rose the Hat. Rose the Hat. Marge. Marge. Where the fuck did I get Marge? Where the fuck got Marge? Rose the Hat. I re- the book was great. Yeah. Book was great. I like the book. I hope they don't fuck up the movie. I hear that that's really good. Everyone's raving about it right now. Really? I'm trying not. I'm so trying it's out? It it's out movie. out? Oh, yeah. Is it really? Yeah, my brother already saw it, I think. Fuck. I'm watching it tomorrow. I don't have time to do showing, shit. The first showing tomorrow at noon, because we're recording for my show, and I have to record it and then post the show by Sunday. Mm. So, like, I have to see it first, first showing tomorrow in order for me to record it. And, and and just so listeners know, what's your other show? Oh, With it's called Another Movie Podcast. Like, an, like another, another movie. Like an, another movie podcast. Yet another. Yeah. Basically. So another movie podcast. Right. So if they go on iTunes, search Another Movie Podcast. Yeah, we'll be the first. So they could hear Oscar Specter. Uh, with a whole other group of people? No, just Rob, my brother. He does it with me. Oh, Luke it's isn't. Like no, not really. He's a lot of working um, outside the state. And stuff. Oh, okay. But like, he hasn't been around for a while. But he's like the Joe and Dave of... Oh, like, got it's it. Not around anymore, right? Got it. So, not to say that I won't, dis- I won't disinvite him. If he comes back, cool. Come back and do a show with us, whatever. Nice. Um, anyway, but uh, we're doing Doctor Sleep. Oh, we're doing this fun thing right now where we're doing... A marathon. We always do marathons. You know, we pick something, a subject matter or an idea or a genre. We just do a few movies, right? Yeah. Uh, this time we choose twin movies. Twin movies? You ever heard of twin movies? No. It's movies like Deep Impact and Armageddon. Oh. They came out the same year, about the same general plot. Oh, yeah. What we did. Or not, we haven't done these yet, but I'm just giving you an example. Dante Speak and Volcano. Right? Those are two. Right. Okay. Right? Okay. So the first one we did. That's a good idea. Right? And so the first one we did was uh, White House Down and Olympus Has Fallen. Two movies about terrorists t- attacking the White House. Do you know how bad that fucking that mess with me when what? they came out? What do you mean? Because I'm like, babe, we saw this movie already. No, we didn't. <laughs> babe, I'm <laughs> telling you, we saw this movie already. Are you saying you saw both and you couldn't I tell did the difference? Not a, I could not tell the difference. It's like uh, Tom Sizemore and the... Uh, oh, 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 yeah. Um, uh, um, who, uh, come on, Tom Sizemore. Uh, <laughs> you can picture him. Uh, he yeah. was Mr. Black. Um, oh. He was Mr. Black in Reservoir Dogs, yeah. right? Oh, All right, Google. No. Google. Googs. Let's try to remember. Mr. Black. Mr. <laughs> no, he's Mr. Blonde. Well, he was Mr. Blonde? He's Mr. Blonde, yeah. You fucking. There's no Mr. Black. Mr. Blonde, Reservoir Dogs. Who yeah. is it? So, so it's like with confusing Tom Sizemore and Michael Madsen. Michael Madsen. Same fucking person. <laughs> It's literally the same person. <laughs> so th- that's how these movies are right. when you try to talk to them with your significant other. Yeah. Well, we compared both, you know, and there's always a winner. Yeah. We both decide. It's our first time doing this. Uh, the next one's going to be um, Executive Decision and Air Force Down, Air Force One. Two airplane diplomatic hijacking <laughs> movies that came out the, around the same year. Yeah. There's a lot wow. of them like that. Wow. You know, you'd be surprised. This is going to be a good one. So, listeners, check that out. Another movie podcast, the Twin Edition. Twin Edition. Nice. Twin Edition. Nice. You like it? All right. Yeah. So, what's been up with you? It's been two weeks. Busy. Devil Devil busy. came out. Have you been busy? Busy stuff. I had the busiest weekend of my life, it seems. Oh, and I hit I, I hit you with some shit on this one. Yes. Well, yes. And then hopefully <laughs> you guys appreciate this. But the editing of this show, that's one thing. Recording it tonight, I have to get enough sleep to wake up early enough to catch that first showing up Doctor Sleep in order to record the episode immediately after and finish the show. Wow. In order to, and then for me to have enough time to then get ready for Lexi's birthday bash, which is like, uh, it starts around 6 or 7 p.m. Is this the Sugar Factory birthday we bash? We talked about it, yeah. It's not going to start there, mind you. It's going to start at Fogo the Chow. And then she said that then she might want to go somewhere else. Kind of like... Talk to her again about it since then. As opposed to Sugar Factory. Right. Smart she decision. She wants to go to ha- Halakahiki. <gasps> is that still open? It's still open. Halakahiki. Yeah, what is it on? River Road? and something? Yes. Yeah, River Road. And like Maybe Lawrence, Lawrence, Lawrence or something like that. Something yeah, like that, yeah. Lawrence River Road. Hala- Hala- the, the. Halakahiki. Yes, it's thank you. It really is. Yeah. So she only wants to go there, and I'd be like, oh, yeah, let's go there instead. Uh, you would be much happier. I would be much happier. But, you know, in the summertime, mm-hmm. the Halakihiki is nice because it has this whole... Uh, outdoor thing. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And you think you're in Hawaii. It's really good. And it's in residential I mean, I don't suburb fooled. Chicago. I don't you get know. fooled by it. I don't think I'm in Hawaii. But it's very nice. Yeah. The yeah. drinks will 
sneak up on you? Yes. Dude, they always sneak up on me. Go time. for Halakiki. Ka- I think I'm ready for it, and I'm not ready for it. I still <laughs> get like, you know, I still get drunk. Have some apple cider delicious drink. Oh, I have some of that, too. Mm-hmm. We made like... Oh, that's why you got the moonshine. I think we made like 15 bottles of that shit. <sighs> Fifteen mason jars. I'm gonna raid, I'm gonna raid your your fridge. Dude, I'll give you a bottle. You don't have to raid shit. I'll give you a bottle. Uh, okay. Yeah. I'm not saying no. I'll ah, in a heartbeat. done. In a heartbeat. Done. All right. We're hey, some anyway. alcoholics on this so, fucking show. Yeah, we're very alcoholics. <laughs> anyway, so I have that going on. That's all tomorrow, and I'm hoping that after the recording, maybe I have some wiggle room in there to start editing either this show or the movie or the other show. Got it. And then I won't finish either, but I'll do it. And then depending on what time I get home tomorrow night. And depending what happens, I don't know with Lexi, maybe if I'm staying with her or what we're doing, I don't know what we're doing. Um, edit the show tonight, that night, before I go to sleep. Wake up, I have to see her family at some point because they're celebrating her actual birthday, which is on the actual Sunday. Yeah. Um, celebrating her birthday, so I might have to like do an in law visit. And I have Oof. to see my aunt who is in rehab. Uh, doing physical therapy at some point and see my grandmother again because I've only seen her once. So there's that. And then um, wow. my friend from Indiana is visiting this weekend only. And he has, I haven't seen him since his wedding two years ago. The so, Indiana wedding. We talked about that yeah, on the show. About that. Yeah, like the uh, the Polish-Mexican uh, yeah, alliance. wedding. Yeah. Well, and none of them are that, but we were. The friends were. Oh, well, gotcha, they're gotcha. They're all white. They're whiter than that cup right there. Oh, that's white. That plate order. That's white. Um, but yeah, he's coming to visit with his wife, and, and we obviously would love to see him and catch up. And James is asking me, "Oh, we're going to hang out too, because he's friends with him too, and we want to hang out." And I'm like, "When am I going to have time to do that? I don't know." Oh, so are you saying this episode might be late? No, no, no. I'm oh, okay. Gonna, I will figure out how to do it, as I always do. That's our Oscar Specter. Yeah, I will. And then somewhere I have to eat food. Yeah, eat, shower. Poop. Yeah, I gotta get a haircut. That's another one I keep forgetting. I gotta shave. I gotta do a bunch of things. <laughs> <laughs> you know, get an outfit. Prepare Lexi's gift. I gotta ask something nice. Should we talk about it? Will I she mean, listen? I mean, yeah, she will not listen. And plus, she'll have it by the time that she like, Oh, right. So what'd you get her? Hmm. Because if, if, if the outtakes of episode... Oh, God. <sighs> Was it 101? Well, uh, was it one of them? When we did the episode, the outtakes of your, uh, your three year love puzzle for Lexi. Oh, yeah. I mean, was, it, was that one on one? I think one on one. So if, if, if you went through all that, this, I mean, I mean this is a big 21 birthday. What did oh, you do? Oh, no. Don't, don't, don't hype it up. Uh oh. <laughs> Sorry. No, Scratch don't, everything don't, I said. No, don't hype it up. I'm just saying, I got her, like, I have a list of all the things. So. The, oh, he does. I have a list of a bunch of things. That so. is a nice leather bound book you have there. Yeah, it's my planner, my weekly planner. I like that. If I don't put it on here, I won't do the show like that. I'll forget that I <laughs> oh, exist. No. So, like, all right, so I have written on here different types of things that I think I've gotten her or I've already gotten her over time. Because I'm more of a massive collector of gifts than it is like one gift, one person. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So like for I got her something for for Halloween. Not just because it was, I found some nice spooky things like spooky earrings and shit like that. Nice. Something nice. But for her birthday and then her birthday and then she also, there's also our anniversary coming up and then there's Christmas by the time that happens anyway so her birthday I got her oh I got her like a joke bag uh, a bag of gifts for of things she left in my room <laughs> what? like a joke gift okay oh like a hair tie <laughs> an earring one earring he's got it written down he's got it all written down uh, guys lip balm some clothes chips chips <laughs> stale <laughs> ass salt and vinegar chips she left some Pringles <laughs> So I'm gonna give her as a gift, and I'll put that in the most expensive looking thing. So yeah. Make it make her fool like fool her more. That'd be funny. Um, that would be funny. And then I got something called something borrowed. So that's something forgotten. This is something borrowed, where she she kind of broke her vape months ago, and I le- I've been lending her one of my other vapes. Yeah. Like a like a pen vape thing to use instead. And so I'm going to give her the rest of the vape things, like the box and the rest of the juices that I have for it. That's Maybe awesome. Just keep it. It's okay, honey. <laughs> so something borrowed is that. And power bars that I never wanted to eat, but she likes. Power uh, bars. Some lotion that she loves that I have. I'm like, okay, we well, can have it. I'm just going to put it in this thing. And then I got something Swifty. Did you say Swifty? I did. 
So, okay, all right. Yes, just uh, want to make sure. Swifty. My birthday is November 10th. That's the same day that Rick and Morty Season 4 comes out. Oh, so I, got her, I got it. I got a Rick and Morty underwear, Rick, a Rick and Morty book about this guy who does uh, who goes into the science of Rick and Morty to see how true it is. And then uh, I, I already bought the show in advance, so you can watch the first four episodes. Nice. So they premiere. Um, shit like that. Good for you. Right? Uh-oh. What? All the rigs are going to fall oh, down no. now. Everything, everything's dead. Everything's going to go. What did you drop? So, All right, you got it. Yeah, that's fine. But yeah. That's, that's great. Yeah. Well, at, at the end of the day, I hope you don't go to Sugar Shack. Factory. Sugar Factory. Might as well be a shack. Oh, Sugar Shack used to be a... Oh, it still is a, an ice cream place on 26th, uh, 26th Street in the south side. Oh, I don't know. Yeah. I used to go there all the time. Are you hiccuping from drinking? I was a little. Yeah. Um, <laughs> no, that's awesome. Um, what what else? What else we got? No, the other thing you told me. I feel say. like yeah, I feel like we were talking about something for outtakes. And then you said like, oh, just tell me then or whatever. Yeah, do you remember it what it was? was? About um, because I don't remember what it was. Uh, oh yeah, this thing happened with Kick. The app Kick. K I K. K I K. I like to kick something. That's right. Right. Because I said I think I used kick. Right, you're talking about your sidekick. I'm the fucking T Mobile sidekick. Right. That's how far back we're going. Right. Let it roll. What so happened? Something happened where like it caused some ripples. Ripples in in, in Lexi and myself. Uh, for like a good three days. Really? Yeah, it's just like in the final like, Social stuff. media sucks. Yeah, it does. It re- it's garbage. So I, I've had, I mean, I had kick probably back then when I had a sidekick too, but I don't remember my account from back then. But anyway, point is, I've had kick for a long time in many different ways. And obviously, the last time I used it was probably for the ways that you can imagine what I'm using for, for hookups. Dirty. For hookups. Dirty. Or just for like just talking dirty with other people, you know, or whatever, sharing pictures or. That kind of thing. Unfortunately, yes. Yeah. But uh, I haven't used it since. Uh, I know that Lexi and I used it. We belong on some chat groups through Kick All right. together as a couple um, in 2017. That was the last time I used it. Wow. I remember because uh, I I did so much research because it was creating all this horrible thing with us that I had to like go into all my old shit and figure everything out. Yeah. And I saw that the last time I downloaded on this phone was 2017, which was accurate because I haven't... Okay. But anyway, the point is that one night, um, the first night that we found out about this, uh, I got an email saying that, oh, do you want to, de- this is like an email saying that you want to deactivate your kick account, and it says press here if you really want to deactivate it, or whatever. And I'm like, it's like an automated thing. And, and she's like, her first question is like, why are you deactivating your kick? Are you on kick? What's going on? And, oh, and like, here we go. And I'm like, no, I don't know why they're sending it. I assume because I haven't been using it or whatever. And she's like, no, you, they only send you that when you immediately after you try to activate it, not like months or years later. Oh. And that's where it starts. So there it is. As you can imagine, boys. There it is. Yep. And just to cut it a little short here, uh, skipping a little bit ahead with a bigger problem we had was uh, this, apparently, the, she went on my account without, without me knowing it. And I guess at work. Oh, it's fine. I would have let her anyway. I don't care. I have nothing to hide. I, I haven't been on it since 2017. Okay. Um, it was true. I've never been on it. And she was talking to some girl on there. Apparently, that there was this thread going or something. this back and forth. Was she talking as you? Yeah, she was talking Ooh. as me. I was asking, like, hey... Uh, not do I know you, but something like, hey, um, have we been talking recently or something? Hey, have I sent you a dick pic? Right. <laughs> Stuff like that, right? Yeah, basically that. And like, hey, have we, have we been chatting recently or whatever? And like, she's like, yeah, this other person <gasps> that's lying. Um, and she's like, oh, and then she, apparently she asked a couple more questions. And she's like, well, I'm actually this guy's girlfriend and I want to know what he's been up to. Can you oh. tell me? And apparently she said something like, not, she didn't give him anything. There was no hard evidence at all. It wasn't like, oh, here's a screenshot of his messages. Right, here's right. his dick pic that he sent me. <laughs> None of that because there was because there's nothing to give out. I've never given them out. Right. So like, but she was still suspicious and suspicious about it. And I found out, you know, I read the thing. The, the account is clearly fake. And it's like the picture of the icon, you know, the picture you use of yourself. It's yeah. clearly like a porn site pic. It wasn't a real person. No way she looks that hot or that person exists. Yeah. And like all this stuff. And by the end of it, she got around that. I don't know. Someone just has my information because there's no way I was on it. Whoa. Yeah. And it caused problems. Yeah. yeah fucking, I mean, obviously. And she's that like, is some bullshit. Yeah. That happened. Wow. That happened. 
Yeah, it's, it's stuff like that. And have you heard of deep fake? Uh, it sounds familiar. So it, it kind of, it's kind of what it reminds me of is we could now take video and splice you in at any point in that video doing anything we want you to do, including your voice. Oh man. And it's called deep fake. And it's, it's, it's very scary technology. Um, I could have you murdering somebody. I could have you and cheating on your it, girlfriend post and post it as video proof of you doing this. And it's not you. Well, it's you, a picture of you that was found offline. Right. And especially since we have our voices out there oh, uh, over 103 episodes, right? 103 mm-hmm. episodes. I could make you do anything I want you to do. And and you would be guilty in the, probably in the eyes of the law. You could have me say, I shot the clerk. Yeah, exactly. I shot the clerk. Yeah, exactly. I shot the clerk. Fucked up stuff. Deep fake. Um, there's a, that movie Spider Man Away from Home, Far From Home. Have you is, seen it? Is that the one with Jake? Yeah. My man Jake. You saw it, right? I have not. What? Yeah. Okay. I mean, I'm not the biggest Marvel guy, so I guess I shouldn't be whatever. But yeah, it's a pretty good premise in that basically there's a huge deep fake. The video posted about Spider Man in the movie that fucks him up. Exactly. That's then, exactly right. That the villain uses. I'm just. I mean, that's as vague as I can put it by connecting the dots to this episode. But yeah, yeah that t- the technology is out there today. I could do it today if I wanted to invest the time. Right. It's crazy. Yeah. How are you? Well, I'm sorry that happened. Uh, oh, I'm good. I've been. I've been ill, so my voice might sound a little off. Uh, mm-hmm. For this recording, I mean, good time to use these very sensitive mics. I know. When you're right. a little off. Don't f- let me forget to plug back in my sub pump. Uh, I, I, I did <laughs> because if it picks up the sounds of 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 silence, yeah, I had to unplug the sub pump. So don't, don't let me forget to to plug that, that back in. Flood. Right. right, that would be uh, devastating. Yeah. That would be yes, bad. I can't afford that. Um, no, it's good. You know, the new job, uh, the new promotion kicked in as of, of Monday of this week. And Monday of the, or this week was very uh, travel intensive. Mm-hmm. I had to go to uh, middle of nowhere, Iowa. And then I had to go to Fargo, North Dakota. So I wood chippered a bitch. Nice. Put him in a wood chipper. Nice. And then from Fargo, I had to do a power drive back to Chicago, which was over 10 hours. To meet my new boss uh, back in our Chicago office uh, for for onboarding stuff. For a nightcap. <laughs> there was some nightcaps. Actually, it was the Basil Hayden's Caribbean Reserve Rye that we got. But, uh, thanks to that day. Terribly fucked up it's on. us up now. <laughs> but that's, uh, you know, when you get into sales, man, because I'm in sales now. Yeah. No, I know. You're I about used... to tell me a world that I very much understand. It is a a world of craziness. We're talking like near unlimited budgets to do what whatever the fuck you want to do to make your customers happy. Guys who have, are used to partying for the last you know twenty years, just partying every night. Uh, <laughs> you mean the customers whining are and right? dining people? My, my coworkers, my coworkers. <laughs> whining and dining people. I'm like, oh my god, I've been missing this. Yeah. Why was I in? But that's a slippery slope, Jay. It, well, yeah. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> my buddy Randy from a. Uh, yeah. Somewhere out there, radio dot com is, is a coworker of mine, very near and dear friend. Uh, he's like, "Yeah, you'll be, you'll be, uh, you'll be an alcoholic and divorced in six months wow. in this job." Yeah, and I keep telling him, "No, dude, I'm happy. I'm Bro. happy." Yeah, but uh, if if Tuesday night was any testament to what he's saying, happiness is a warm gun. I can say happiness is a warm gun. Exactly, yeah. exactly, perfect. God damn, that was perfect. You like Good it. for you. <laughs> that was great. Welcome. Thank you. Um, yeah, so I, I just got uh, hammered with my boss uh, and my coworker, Randy, and uh, it's going to be fun. It's going to be a lot of fun. Yep. But this week was just a lot of travel. I, I've been sick. and uh, Yeah, that's because your immune system is not used to the party. And you're just, I now, guess, yeah. It's, it's preemptively warning you. I'm like, we're drinking. What about OSHA? Are we, are we OSHA. Do they do? What are you kidding me? <laughs> Did you talk to OSHA a lot? Isn't it? OSHA, the occupational. Oh, I know. I know. Uh, yeah, what is it called? Occupational Safety and Hazard Administration, or yes, I'm glad. So, uh, it was a lot of fun. It, I mean, just these guys are uh, 
just a whole level, a whole nother level of greatness. And I'm, I'm, I'm happy to be part of it now. Well, we talked about this in other times. I don't know if it was on the mic or not about salesmen or certain types of people who get to be salesmen. They're like always on. They're always on. And these guys, you know, I work for a, a fifteen billion dollar a year organization, yeah. right? And uh, global organization. And these guys are, I mean, they're the creme de la creme of yeah. salespeople. Yeah. Um, and now I get to be among their ranks. Yeah. It's pretty, uh, it's pretty humbling. I don't feel up to the, no, I can't say I don't feel up to the task. I don't feel, uh, I'm not on their level yet. Yeah. You know, it's going to take a while to get to their level. And, uh, it's, it's just. It's great. Now ask them, you know, their divorce rate. <laughs> right. You know? I'm going to say they're always on. We talked about the pitfalls of yes, always on. Always on. You can't be on when you get home. You don't want to be on. I don't. What do you think that does to a marriage? So that that's something I got to get used to, right? Right. And and whining and dining people. Yeah. You know, usually at five o'clock I'm off. I'm done. Yeah. Don't talk to me. Don't talk. Right. Now it's it's whining and dining. It's entertaining. You it's see the way I walk into my store. Yeah. I'm the same way, except you know a little more opposite. Because when I leave, I leave by myself, so no one can see me like change into the bitterness that I am, you know? <laughs> but when I walk in, everyone sees me. There's customers saying, oh, hi, Oscar. I'm not clocked in. I'm not clocked in. <laughs> right. That's exactly right. I'm not in, I'm not in yet. That's the right. The doctor's not in. Yes, yes. So that's something I definitely have to adapt to, you know, is, is being I'm on. I'm like a, like a hood rat. I had this hood. <laughs> I was like... I look like a piece of shit, man. I look like I'm about to rob a place. Who's this? I, just, I swear to God, I was you just going to say, that. who's this Mexican that's going to rob us? Yeah. Um, just like that. I walk in the sea of whites and then go to the back room, take everything out. By the time I come back, I'm like, all right. <sighs> yeah, I'm, I'm on now. Right. Yeah, but these guys, they're they are always on. They're great guys. Great guys. Yeah. But they're they are always on. And they are they are the pinnacle of, of what sales is. Yeah. And it's... I feel like I'm not up to par at this point, you know, which is something I'm not used to feeling. Yeah. In my in my old role, I was the best of the best. Yeah. Out of the out of the out of the the company, so it it, it was just a, a rough long week. Yeah. Of uh, of some reality checks, I guess. Reality checks. Yes. <laughs> you ain't shit, motherfucker. No, not yet. You will be. <laughs> yeah. But uh, so that, that that that's all. That's yeah. all. That and the the new equipment is what I've been up to this week. Yeah. Looks very nice. Yeah. Um, you went to the thing? The uh, yeah. contact info? Facebook and, yeah. Oh, the contact info. So you're telling me, let's hurry it up here. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, we're, yeah, we've been on for a bit. <laughs> <laughs> Always. I mean, we did like 48 minutes of, uh, before we did, before we started the show. Holy cow. So, wow. Shit. All right. Um, well, you know, Oscar, mm -hmm. the easiest way. To contact the Supernatural Occurrence Studies podcast is by visiting our website. Do you know? Do you know our website? I think it's visiting our Western Union account. Right? Like you have to go to any, nope. of, any of your local Western <laughs> Union one eight hundred collect call us. At, nope. No. No. ChicagoGhostPodcast.com. dot com. And if you want to get to our social sites, just go to ChicagoGhostPodcast.com dot com and click on follow. From there, you get to our Facebook. Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, and of course our Patreon. Yeah. Now I'm very excited. Speaking of Patreon, we picked up another two five dollar a month Stay Puffed Marshmallow Man patrons. The new patrons didn't want to promote anything, so I just want to give a heartfelt shout out and thank you to Corey Musil and Danny Reese. Thank you guys so much for your support and for believing in the show. For their support, at just 17 cents a day, Corey and Danny now have access to ad-free podcast episodes and exclusive Patreon-only podcast episodes. Bonus stuff, yeah. Also, Bonus. Uh, what was the last name? Musling? Musil. Musil. Musling. Yeah, whatever. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and for your donation, we will disrespect your family name. <laughs> no, I'm not done yet. I, I was about to disrespect them. Um, do you think that's French for muscle? What does his last name mean? Or Musinex. Musinex. For your the brand? sinuses. For your snot. Wow. That's, that's Corey. Worse. Corey that's Musil. Worse. That's worse. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Could we edit it out? No. Oh, okay. No, I like it. <laughs> 
So thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for your support and for believing in our little passion project. Now, for Danny and Corey's support, at just 17 cents a day, they have access to ad-free podcast episodes and exclusive Patreon-only podcast episodes. And we have some good stuff, I think, up on Patreon for those exclusive exclusive episodes. Yeah, I think so. Serial Killers, Mandela Effect. Yeah, what was that weird one? Oh. oh like the portrait. Junko. Not portrait. The, uh, the frame. Oh, the Gacy, yeah. the Halloween right. special little little release we did, the yeah. Gacy photo I received. Yeah, so uh, so thank you, thank you, thank you. What do you think of that? What do I think of uh, the Gacy thing? No, the new the new patrons. Just we're we're gaining steam here. Oh man, yeah. Please, I I, I want more of you guys. I want you guys to multiply. I want to be able to use crazy new gizmos that Jay's getting in order for us to sound better. To hopefully get more people. Because I want to quit my goddamn day job. <laughs> you don't want to work at Starbucks somewhere? No, not really. So I want to like do this. That'd be really great. Or at least do a bunch of these or something uh, for like a living. That'd be really nice. That would be nice. Like I, w- I would devote a lot more. That is my dream. Into the show. I would pour a lot more heart and soul into it. Yeah. If I could. Um, yeah. Yeah. Totally. Get on board. Yeah. And, and for their, their $5 a month donation, uh, Corey... And Danny will also receive a, a Supernatural Occurrence Studies podcast sticker and a detailed mention in this episode's show notes. More like a label. Yeah, as part of their Stay Puff Marshmallow Man level of sponsorship. Mm-hmm. And we have all the level, levels of Patreon support, each with their, their own perks. So listeners, you. Yeah, I'm talking to you. Yeah, yeah. What are you waiting for? Visit... Patreon.com forward slash Supernatural Occurrence Studies Podcast and pledge your support now. Or go to ChicagoGhostPodcast.com, click on follow, then click on the Patreon icon, and it'll take you right to us. Right? Leave us... Oh, go ahead. No, you're saying you're missing more. I thought you were going to... Yeah. <laughs> no. I don't know how drunk you are. Yeah, I'm, I'm getting there. I'm, I'm feeling like... I, I was preparing to corral you, but I didn't need to do that. It's like my lips aren't working like I want them to work. Yeah. It's very strange. Yeah. So I have to be conscious of that. Yeah. Leave us a voicemail or a text, and we'll read them and play them on the show. Call Chicago area code 872-529-0767. That's 872-529-0767. Where is that from? It's Shuttercock, Montana. <laughs> Shuttercock. It's not real, Jay. I don't know why you're lying to everybody so much. I swear to God, it's I the mean, Chicago if you Gold Coast. Patreon listeners, you just stop lying to them. Shuttercock. <laughs> <I'm sorry. laughs> like that one. Oh, I liked it too much. Yeah. Our email is contact at chicagoghostpodcast.com. Instagram and Twitter is at Chicago Ghosts. Facebook is at Chicago Ghost Podcast. Mm-hmm. Our, our social stuff has been pretty silent lately. Yeah? I don't know why. I mean, whatever. It, so. it, it's okay, but I like I like the interaction. Oh, no, I prefer that, too. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. I would love that. More of that usually feels... Like you're actually, like people are listening, feels like it. Right, yeah. right, right. We got all these great reviews, we got these Patreon supporters, but right. no uh, action on the social. Um, especially the voicemails. I love getting voicemails from listeners and playing them on the shows. It's been a long time. It's been a, it's been a very long time. Yeah. I think the last voicemail we got was for Resurrection Mary. And that was last winter. Yeah. We were being called. Come on, listeners, what, what's the problem over here? Yeah. And they didn't like the way we responded to them. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe that's it. I don't know. They're afraid to call. Yeah. And finally, the easiest way to support the show is by leaving us a five-star ratings on iTunes. iTunes ratings help listeners just like you find our little passion project, our show. Mm -hmm. So help us out and leave us some love on iTunes. You could do it literally right off the phone you're listening to this podcast on right now. I think that's... I think that's everything. Good. Yeah. All right. Shall we we, uh, do the thing? Take a break? Yes. Let's take a break. (laughs) Vape break. (laughs) Vape break. Yeah. (laughs) I need it now. (laughs) All right. So we'll do that, and we'll be right back after this. (laughs) 
listeners, welcome back to the show. Well, the lights are turned down low, the ceremonial candle is lit, and the drinks are definitely flowing. Fuck yeah, they are. Let's start this show. So tonight, Oscar, we're going deep. I mean, really deep. I told you you had to buy me dinner first. <laughs> to the deepest, darkest depths of the ocean. Now, I love the ocean. When I was little, everyone wanted to be cops or firemen. I wanted to be an oceanographer. Mm -hmm. I was fascinated with the ocean and the creatures that lived there. Even as a kid, I kept expensive saltwater fish tanks. I spent a ton on saltwater fish tanks. I vacation at the ocean every chance I get. I could sit and watch the wave for hours on end. I listen to ocean sounds every night when I fall asleep. Maybe it's because up to 60% of the human body is, compo is composed of water. Our brain and heart are composed of 73% water. And our lungs are about 83% water. Our skin contains 64% water. Our muscles and kidneys are 79% water. And even our bones are watery, 31%. So maybe on some physiological level, my body is calling out to the water because I'm more than half water. So for me, the ocean, it's a beautiful thing, something serene and wondrous. But there are other people out there who are terrified of the ocean. Those who have a fear of the ocean suffer from something called thalassophobia. And their phobias can take on many forms. People who suffer thalassophobia might have an overall fear of the ocean. Just one overwhelming fear of that impossibly big, impossibly deep body of water. Other people might not have a fear of the overall ocean, but instead are terrified of large waves or being stuck in the ocean far away from land. Like open water. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Or they might be terrified of the ocean's vast emptiness. Or they may be petrified of encountering sea creatures or sea monsters the things that lie beneath. After all, the ocean covers 70% of the Earth's surface, yet, according to the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Ad Administration, or what will be referred to as NOAA for the rest of this podcast, as of 2019, 80% of the Earth's ocean is unmapped, unobserved, and unexplored. 80%. It's said that we know more about and have gone further into space than we know about our own ocean. That's crazy to think about. So if you think about it, we know hardly anything about the ocean or what lurks beneath it, the, the waves, deep down at depths that are incredibly difficult for man to get to. Areas that exert pressure between 3,000 3, and 9,000 pounds per square inch and areas that have never been touched by sunlight. And at least once or twice per year, we get news about s some strange sea creature from these impossible depths washing ashore and baffling scientists as to what the creature is. Take, for example, the oarfish known as the original sea monster. The oarfish can grow to 56 feet long and are typically found at depths around 3,300 feet deep. So they're not seen by people very often. Is there an and or a butt fish? <laughs> I don't think so. Oh, when the oarfish started washing ashore, people thought they were they were sea monsters that resembled... According to legend, an engraved prince, dating back to half a century, creatures that would overturn ships and schooners. Now, of course, the oarfish, they don't overturn or flip ships, but they are pretty weird looking, and when first discovered, 
No one knew what they were, but they were down there, lurking the whole time. And I'll leave a link to this creature in the show notes. Or how about in 2017 when a nasty-looking sea monster washed ashore in Texas after Hurricane Harvey? This creature, according to National Geographic, was likely a fang-toothed snake eel, typically found at around 300 feet below sea. And notice how National Geographic said likely. Scientists aren't 100% sure this thing is really a fang-toothed snake eel at all. Yet there it was, dead on the beach for all to see. And there's a link to the picture of this, this, this actual creature that washed ashore after Hurricane Harvey in the show notes. Listeners, check it out. It's, it's really freaky. Once in a blue moon, a giant squid will wash ashore, like a 50-foot monster squid that was found beached in New Zealand in 2015. Now, according to scientists, on average, the giant squid is known to grow about 40 feet in length and lives as deep as 3,800 feet below sea. And they're rarely seen. In fact, even though we know they're down there, and scientists have, have been looking to record them for years, the giant squid has only been captured on video twice. Once was in 2012, off the coast of Japan. And once, the giant squid was recorded in June of 2019 in the Gulf of Mexico. The two that, that were captured on video were about 20 feet long. This one that washed ashore in New Zealand, though, was supposedly 50 feet in length. But some experts believe that there are squid much, much bigger than that in the ocean's depths. Now, again, I'll leave a photo of the giant squid that washed ashore in New Zealand, but just be aware, experts disagree as to whether or not the photo is real. It sure looks real to me. Now, the ancient uh, kraken, you know the kraken? Have you heard of it? Oh, yeah. I mean, who hasn't? Uh, the Kraken. You think of a Cthulhu creature, has a Kraken abilities. You think of a, well, just Kraken from pirates. You think of the legends and stuff like that. Exactly. Right. The giant squid is what the, the Kraken supposedly come from. The Kraken that comes up from the deep and destroys mm -hmm. ships and eats people with its right. with its beak. That's what the uh, the giant squid is supposedly originated from the the. The Kraken supposedly originated from the, the giant squid. You also think of like common found uh, uh, species like even goldfish. Like, you know, in a, in a, in a, in a, in a bowl, in a fish bowl, they're pretty small. Yeah. But they tend to like grow larger if their environment is larger. Right, like, exactly. You know, and God knows what they're, what's going on down there. Exactly, yes. Or how about this? In 1938, a species of fish thought to have gone extinct 65 million years ago, called the coelacanth, was discovered alive and well, living in waters near the Comoros Islands off the coast of East Africa and in the waters off Sulawesi, Indonesia. The coelacanths live at a depth of 2,300 feet and can grow 6 feet in length and weigh up to 200 pounds. So we really have no idea what creatures lie in wait down at the deepest, darkest depths of the ocean. But that doesn't mean we aren't actively trying to figure it out. One way scientists try to gain a better understanding about what's going on in the ocean is by listening to the ocean. Through an array of underwater microphones called hydrophones, which are located throughout the world's oceans, scientists can listen to and record underwater acoustics. Examples of underwater acoustics could be sounds that come from biological life, like whales and dolphins. It could come, it could come from seismic activity, like underwater earthquakes or underwater volcanoes erupting. Or it could, can come from icebergs breaking up. There's the sounds of waves and water currents. And of course, there's man-made sounds like military sonar and the sounds of ship traffic. 
the ocean is really a noisy place. Actually, let's listen to some common underwater sounds recorded by hydrophones. And Oscar, I'm sorry, I know you're going to hate me. I've got a lot of samples for you to cut in. That's all right. So listeners, turn up the volume and let's zen out to some ocean sounds. Now, here are two samples of common biological sounds. This first sample is the underwater vocalization of dolphins. And here are the underwater vocalizations of humpback whales. All right, those were those were common examples of biological sounds, things that are be, being recorded by these hydrophones every single day, dolphins and humpback whales. Now let's hear some geophysical sounds. This next sample is of underwater seismic activity. When you listen to this clip, listen for this kind of sputtery, static-like sound. That's believed to be the sound of an underground plate shifting or cracking way deep under the ocean floor, which caused an underwater earthquake. So let's play that now. Now this next sound is of an iceberg running aground. Now this is how actual waves sound from underwater. And finally, let's listen to some man-made underwater sounds. This is a hydrophone recording of military sonar. And here's a recording of underwater sound caused by ship traffic. Now, underwater sounds like the ones you just heard are recording using three factors, temperature, salinity, and pressure. So if you have warm, salty water, like say the waters of the South Pacific Ocean, sound will move faster because warm, salty water molecules 
have more energy, and they can vibrate and transmit sound waves faster. And the best acoustics come from the deep sea, as immense pressure of the deep sea forces sound waves to move faster through the warm, salty water. Now, in 1997, researchers listening for underwater volcanic activity in the South Pacific Ocean recorded a strange, powerful, extremely loud sound on hydrophones that were over 3,000 miles apart from one another. This sound originated at the coordinates 50 degrees south latitude, 100 degrees west longitude, a GPS location in the South Pacific Ocean, which is about 2,000 miles off the coast of Argentina and about 4,000 miles off the coast of Christchurch, a city in the South Island, New Zealand. The sound lasted about a minute and grew in intensity as it traveled. It was something never heard before and has since been given the, the very fun name, the bloop. Now let's listen to the bloop. In this first example, which I took right off Noah's website, the bloop sound is sped up 16 times its, ori its original speed, and the sound in Noah's recording is played twice. Now, it, it might not sound like much to us, but to scientists at NOAA, that right there was a very big deal. Now let's hear the bloop recording recorded at its original speed. pretty weird, right? The bloop sound is something totally different and totally unique. And for the sound to be heard for over 3,000 miles, whatever created the bloop has to be huge. And it drove scientists crazy trying to figure out what was big enough to cause such a massive underwater sound. Now, of course, theories abound as to what caused the mysterious bloop. Was it, was it ship engines? Was it fishing boat winches? Maybe a secret underground, or excuse me, underwater military test? Like an underwater bomb, maybe? Well, we heard samples of ship sounds and military sonar. They definitely weren't a match. And the U.S. Navy said they had absolutely no tests happening in the area where the bloop was recorded. With those theories out the window, scientists turned their attention to a, a biological being responsible for creating the bloop. Generally, low-frequency sounds like the bloop come from a very large source. For example, in the animal world, the lowest frequency underwater sounds are going to come from the largest animals in the ocean, namely blue, blue whales or fin whales. Blue whales are known to be the largest species to have ever lived on Earth, growing to 105 feet long and weighing up to 200 tons. And the blue whale can project sound up to a 1,000 miles. And the problem is, the bloop sound was projected over 3,000 miles, much, much further than the largest known living creature on the planet could project. Some scientists speculated that whatever made the bloop sound must be an incredibly massive, undiscovered ocean creature. And in 2002, when a NOAA researcher named Dr. Christopher Fox announced to the public that the sound was likely caused by something biological, an as-of-yet unknown ocean creature, the public went wild with conspiracy theory and the idea that a real-life 
Lovecraftian Leviathan could actually exist in our ocean. And I specifically use the word Lovecraftian because the location where the bloop originated, again, 50 degrees south latitude, 100 degrees west longitude in the South Pacific Ocean, that location screams out to fans of famous American horror author H.P. Lovecraft. In what is arguably Lovecraft's most popular work, a story called Call of Cthulhu, which was first published in 1928 in a magazine called Weird Tales, Lovecraft, Lovecraft describes a lost, sunken city named Ralea, located, according to Lovecraft, in the South Pacific Ocean at the coordinates 47 degrees 9 minutes south land, lat latitude, uh, 126 degrees 43 minutes west longitude. Now, in Call of Cthulhu, Lovecraft explains that Ralea is a sunken city filled with corpses and is home to an amoral sleeping leviathan named Cthulhu. According to Lovecraft, Cthulhu is part of a powerful pantheon of gods, which he refers to as the Great Old Ones. This particular Great Old One, Cthulhu, is said to lie in a death-like slumber beneath the Pacific Ocean in his sunken city called Relia. Lovecraft describes Cthulhu as being gigantic, hundreds of meters tall, with a huge octopus-like head, with an unknown number of tentacles surrounding its mouth, and its body is scaly and rubbery looking. Cthulhu is described as having webbed human looking arms and legs, and gigantic claws on his hind and forefeet. Cthulhu has a pair of rudimentary wings on its back, and it's said that people go mad just by catching a glimpse of Cthulhu. Now, the coordinates Lovecraft gives as being the, the location of Cthulhu's underwater city of Relia is located in the real ocean location scientists refer to as the Oceanic Pole of Inaccessibility, otherwise known as Point Nemo. In other words, the point in the ocean that's furthest from land. Now, Point Nemo is interesting because it truly is the most remote location on Earth. As Point Nemo is surrounded by thousands of miles of ocean on all sides. It's a place that's so far from civilization that a person theoretically floating at Point Nemo is closer in proximity to astronauts in space than they are other people on Earth. In fact, it's highly unlikely a human has ever been to this very exact location in all of recorded history. Now, Point Nemo was discovered in 1992 by a survey engineer named H. Lucatella. Lucatella located the point in the ocean that was furthest away from any land using a computer program called Hippocras along with GPS satellites, which calculated the coordinates that were the greatest distance from three equidistant land locations. And as it turned out, Point Nemo, the literal middle of nowhere, is a coordinate. It's not a landmass, just a coordinate in the middle of the South Pacific Ocean. At GPS location, 48 degrees, 52.6 minutes south latitude, 123 degrees, 23.6 minutes west longitude. This location, Point Nemo, lies exactly 1,670 miles from a trio of land dots or land masses. And those land masses are the Pitcairn Islands to the north of Point Nemo, one of the Easter Islands to the northwest of Point Nemo, and Meher Island, part of Antarctica, to the south of of Point Nemo. And I don't know about you, but I could totally picture an ancient god in its creepy city lying underneath the waves in the most remote location on the planet. Can't you? Of course not. It's like, um, 
It's one of those places that you think it's like the uh, the ocean's equivalent of like in the middle of the desert kind of thing, like where aliens would visit. Mm -hmm. Think of the middle of nowhere areas where strange things happen and no one notices because no one's there. Or um, right. Or like Lake Vostok is also one of those places, right? Yeah, Lake Vostok, yeah. More like a sleeping thing because it's so frozen, right? It's like looking in the past. Yeah. But uh, this one has like it's active, but no one's still there. And I like the the example you said about um, uh, people who would be in Point Nemo, which is like a Jules Verne thing, right? It has to be. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah, 20,000 leagues. Yeah, 20, leagues yeah exactly. Yeah. It was named after the Nemo, right, right. which was the, the ship, the ship. The, 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 the sub. Yeah. Um, it looks like, uh, I like that analogy you said about uh, astronauts being closer to them. On our own planet, you right. could actually be in a spot right. where your closest counterpart yes. is in space. That's crazy. Now, not only is Point Nemo the, re the most remote place on the planet... It's also it's also the, the location where most autonomous spacecraft and satellites are sent to die when they re-enter our atmosphere. Less likely to harm humans if you crash these things into the most remote place on Earth, right? Now, no one knows for sure, but it's believed that 250 to 300 pieces of space debris rest in the depths of Point Nemo. That'd be so cool. Can you imagine seeing that wreckage? Oh, man. I mean, they're probably pretty scattered, right? It's not like the only one. Well, they don't really know. That's how remote they are. They don't well, even know. Well, just the way waves work, you know, I mean, when they hit, that's probably when they're all the debris is closest together, but they're not going to travel. Right, they probably float right, somehow the with the weight, with the underwater or currents. Sink, I assume some of it, the heavy parts would sink. Yeah. But imagine how that would look down there. Well, it, it's interesting because one of the largest pieces of space junk mm -hmm. in Point Nemo is believed to be the 120-ton Russian space lab Mir, which was brought down and laid to rest at Point Nemo in 2001. Now, Point Nemo is located, and I have a point to all this, Point Nemo is located in what's called the South Pacific Gyre. An enormous rotating current that actually prevents nutrient-rich water from flowing into the area, eliminating any food source. Now, without any food sources, it's impossible to sustain life in this part of the ocean. And therefore, Point Nemo is called the least biologically active region of the world's ocean. So, when scientists recorded the bloop, coming from this area void of any significant ocean life, obviously they were besides themselves wondering what the hell it could be. Something that thrives from the lack of nutrients in other animals? Yeah. Or maybe like it's passing through a problem. Who knows? Uh, right, right, right. That's so crazy to think about. Like the one place that we know there's nothing more than likely living there. Right. right. And what's really crazy is that half a century before... Before the discovery of Point Nemo and the recording of the bloop, H.P. Lovecraft placed his Cthulhu city of Relia in the South Pacific o Ocean at coordinates 47 degrees 9 minutes south latitude, 126 degrees 43 minutes west longitude, which are astonishing, astonishingly close to the coordinates of Point Nemo and to where the bloop was recorded. This fact leads some people, and scientists even, to speculate that Point Nemo is really home to a yet undiscovered creature of some sort. A monstrous creature capable of projecting sound 3,000 miles underwater, creating the bloop, in other words. So was the bloop a real call of Cthulhu? I mean, probably not. Since the bloop was recorded in 1997, scientists have been hard at work trying to figure out what exactly caused this mysterious sound. And now believe the, the bloop is actually, the scientists believe the bloop is actually a recording of an ice quake. The bloop is now an iceberg cracking and breaking away from a glacier 
underwater, and that's how it sounds. Could it be like a tectonic plates shifting? Could that be a thing? No, that's different. That's different. This, yeah, this they think is an actual iceberg breaking somewhere in Antarctica. And it's like, thanks, global warming. And if you take the sound we played of an iceberg running aground, let's insert that here again. and place it next to the bloop at normal speed. They sound really similar, don't they? I'd say similar, but not exact. And not all scientists at NOAA agree that ice is the culprit. So really, the mystery remains as to what, with 100% certainty, caused this weird sound. It's fun to think about an unknown, massive creature lurking the depths of our ocean in the most remote section on planet Earth, isn't it? Or maybe H.P. Lovecraft was onto something with the Call of Cthulhu. And believe it or not, the bloop isn't the only strange underwater sound that has baffled scientists and led to wild speculation as to its origin. Here's another recording captured on March 1, 1999 by scientists at NOAA on hydrophone. This one is simply called Julia. And the recording we're about to play has been sped up 16 times. Oscar, let, let's run the Julia clip. Now, Julia lasted for about 15 seconds and was loud enough to be heard over the entire Equatorial Pacific Ocean Autonomous Hydrophone Array, which is an array of moored autonomous hydrophones used to listen to parts of the Pacific Ocean between 20 degrees north latitude and 20 degrees south longitude. And this distance is thousands of miles. So once again, just like the bloop, whatever made Julia had to be big, really big. And once again, scientists blame Julia on an iceberg that ran aground somewhere in, that, in Antarctica. As scientists believed, Julia originated from somewhere between Bransfield Straits and Cape Adare, both li located off Antarctica. Now, here's where the real fun comes in with Julia. There's a leaked quote-unquote classified photo and I'll leave a link in the show notes, supposedly taken by a NASA satellite, the Apollo AA-35, which shows the massive shadow of something in the waters of Cape Dare at the time Julia Sound was recorded. If this shadow can be proven to be from a sea animal, that would be the biggest goddamn sea animal ever recorded a sea creature of absolutely gigantic proportions. Now here's the thing. I want you to keep this in mind. I tried researching the Apollo satellite AA-35 to see if it's a real thing, and I couldn't find a single reference to it unless it was attached to the classified Cape Dare shadow picture. And to me, that's pretty suspect. Unless AA-35 is a classified satellite, that makes sense that I wouldn't find information on it. I don't know. But the shadow picture is interesting, to say the least. So who knows? Again, I'll leave a link to the shadow photo supposedly taken by a NASA satellite in the show notes. 
check it out and let us know what you think. Now here's another mysterious sound recorded on a hydrophone called the train, which was also recorded in Cape Adare on March 5th, 1997 on the Equatorial Pacific Ocean Autonomous Hydrophone Array, two years before Julia was recorded emanating from the same general location as Julia. Now once again, scientists from NOAA blamed breaking ice for this sound. And finally, we'll listen to an underwater recording called Upsweep. What's interesting about Upsweep is that since NOAA first recorded the strange sound, again on the Equatorial Pacific Ocean Autonomous Hydrophone Array in August 1991, the exact same sound keeps occurring seasonally peaking in the spring and the fall. The upsweep consists of narrow bands of upsweeping sounds of several seconds duration each. Scientists believe this sound comes from underwater volcanic acti activity, located near 50 degrees south latitude, 100 degrees west longitude, but they have yet to pin down exactly what's causing it, or why it happens seasonally. Here's the upsweep sound sped up 20 times. And just so you know, I should have probably mentioned this earlier, these sped up sounds are taken directly from Noah's website. It's not us speeding up the sounds, it's Noah. Oscar, let's roll upsweep. Volcanic activity, huh? Sounds more like the mating calls of some crazy, big-ass sea creatures, if you ask me. But what do I know? Listeners, let us know what you think. Contact at chicagoghostpodcast.com Now here's something that happened very recently, less than three months ago at the time of this recording, that just may lend credence to the massive, unknown underwater creature theory. And this event is what gave me the idea for this episode, actually. What if I told you, Oscar, that an entire underwater research station recently disappeared without a trace? What do you mean disappeared? Like, got destroyed or actually, like, like, if it was never built? Is that what you mean by disappeared? Or do you mean, like... There one second, gone the next. In, in a second, not yes. like, oh, we're going to check up on the station, and they're not there anymore. Gone. Huh. It's true. In the Baltic Sea, on August, 24, August 21st, 2019, a large underwater monitoring station called the Bokens Ek Ob Observatory, used to gather important scientific data about the surrounding sea, suddenly stopped sending transmissions to the station's manager, managers at the GMR Helmsholz Center for Oceanic Research, Kiel. This was an important, very expensive piece of equipment, about the size of a car, which collected valuable data about water temperature, nutrients, salinity, the speed of water flow, and priceless data for researchers. So when it suddenly stopped sending data, divers were dispatched to figure out what happened to the transmission. When divers got down to where the station was supposed to be, 1.1 miles offshore and 72 feet below seawater, much to their astonishment, the entire station was gone, vanished, and the only thing left was a shredded transmission cable and some drag marks that only went on for a short distance then disappeared. 
Now, the research station sat in a restricted research-only section of the Baltic Sea, off the northern coast of Germany. Leisure boats and ships, merchant ships, and fishing vessels are not allowed in the restricted area. So the idea of theft was thrown out pretty early in the investigation. Yet theft, either on purpose or accidental, like the, like the station got caught up in a, a legal fishing vessel's anchor or its netting, seems to be the only logical explanation. Massive storms and heavy currents were also ruled out because the research station had been anchored to the sea floor without incident for over two years prior to its disappearance. And there was no evidence of such violent underwater activity recorded by the station prior to it going offline. That leaves marine animals as a possible culprit. But that idea, too, was thrown out due to the research station's size and weight and the fact that it was securely anchored to the sea floor. Now, this station consisted of two racks, one weighing 550 pounds and the other weighing 220 pounds. The racks included a frame holding the station's power supply, probably another one or 200 pounds, along with a heavy cable connecting the station to the coast, easily a few hundred pounds, and a frame to hold the sea monitoring sensors, again, another hundred pounds or so. So here we have this station, the size of a car, and easily weighing just shy of a ton, and anchored to the sea floor. And it was removed what had to be a great force, leaving no real trace save for the shredded, the shredded communication cable. It's like, what the hell? And suddenly, when I read about the Bunkins Eck Observatory, in my opinion, the bloops and the Julias and the upsweeps could really be something more than shifting ice or volcanic activity. Maybe an unknown Leviathan or Leviathans really do live in the deepest, most remote parts of the ocean, and their activities are fi finally being recorded by advanced underwater technologies, like the hydrophones. How, um, how, you know how old hydrophones are as an invention that we've been using? I want to say the hydrophones go back at least to the early 80s. Early 80s? Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's not right. That's yeah. Not right. And we're probably getting better and making better ones. Since exactly. Process. It's funny how we have to, in order for the ocean to be understood, we have to focus on on listening first. Yeah. It'd probably be a lot longer for us to see something, if, you know, that we hear. Um, obviously, taste, touch, and everything. <laughs> smell. It's probably last place. <laughs> right. right. Um, but a lot of things we tend to, on Earth, I mean, meaning on the surface, we tend to uh, see first, right? Listen later or figure it out later. Right, we see everything for it. We see an alien, we see a Bigfoot, we see... See ghosts. Yeah, right, we see ghosts. <laughs> you don't, you don't, no one talks about, you know, smelling them. I mean, people talk about hearing them, ghosts, yeah. but not like the rest. You don't hear aliens, you see aliens. Yeah. Uh, but the ocean's the opposite, right? It's more hearing. Yeah. That's interesting. Uh, what, what do you, I mean, I guess I'll ask you after I tell you, but I think what I think this, this thing is, I do think it is a creature... Or uh, something that's alive, and where there's one, most likely there's more than one. Right. How do it you has keep, to... How do you keep this alive? It has to propagate. It has right. to reproduce. Assuming that's how they do. Some people, some species are asexual. They lay eggs. I know a lot of sea creatures do lay eggs that aren't mammals or whatever, so I don't know. Uh, what if um, What if there's a sub, like a subgroup or a group of, you know, from the Cretaceous period, or, or is that right, Cretaceous? Jurassic period, or whatever. Right. Um, what are some of those dinosaurs? Like, you know how they say a lot of the dinosaurs that we used to know of, you know, devolved or evolved into birds. Right. And that's why birds carry a lot of those qualities. Yeah. Uh, and the same thing goes with one certain land creature that goes to the sea a lot. Do you know which one I'm talking about? Tortoise? The alligator. Oh, yeah. You know, they kind of shift. They got to get, it lives in both worlds. Yeah. It breeds, though. But it does, you know, go into a lot of uh, swamp areas or whatever. It lives in the water, too. So what if uh, this is like an extreme, more, a bigger version of that? Like some of those species, some of those predators or, or non-predators, dinosaurs, 
evolved into a bigger or a big version or the same size version of themselves when they went down into the ocean before the ice age or something like that. you know or whatever yeah. that caused them to die off. you know what if they just evolved into something down there like just as much as we have birds what if there's whatever they are down there and it just went down down deep 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 right, right. exactly yeah. and and when these massive storms happen Right, right. These upsweep of right. the currents. Right, they, they It's Sharknado. And they, these things, yeah, they beach, and people have no idea. Right. Who knows? God knows. What's down There's there? There's a bigger world down there than there is up top. Yeah, right. exactly. I'm not even saying that the surface of, because I know there's more uh, covering, there's more of our, most of the surface of our, our world is covered in water. I'm not even saying just the surface. I'm saying there's more down there than we can think of from our surface to the sky. Absolutely. Like double, triple, quadruple Absolutely. the amount of world. Down yeah, there? just insane. just Google creatures of the deep. Right. Yeah. I mean, terrifying stuff is down there. Yeah. And and for centuries we had no idea they were down there until we got the technology and we're to still actually. Of spiders. Yeah, oh, I'm terrified of spiders. Yeah, um, yeah and, and until we had the technology to actually get down there and see these things. Yeah. Oh shit! Look what's it. so. Who knows what was down there? Dude. Yeah. And the fact that H.P. Lovecraft said his court, he that's very, quoted. That's so eerie. Isn't I it? I wonder if, it, like, did he travel the world like he was like a world traveler type? No, he was he was poor. He was poor. Okay. He was poor. I don't know if he was well poor. after he was dead, uh -huh. did his works become famous and yeah, popular. I mean, that sounds right. He was dirt poor when he was how a writer. Figure, Ali, how would he... Guess that. What books, exactly. What books were around that a poor man has access to about maritime coordinates? Yes, and to give the coordinates of so close. Listeners, go back and listen to the coordinates. See how close they are. They're pretty close. To this to the Point Nemo, Point Nemo right. the, 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 uh, the, the, the ocean and the bloop, and it all came together. Yeah. It was so ironic, so crazy. It's the bloopening. Uh, <laughs> the bloopening. I love it. Um, I wonder, like... I don't know. I feel so. Do you think it's coincidental, or do you, what do you think about that 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 specific aspect of uh, Lovecraft? Man, I <sighs> obviously saying he had some sort of foresight is admitting to something pretty huge, yeah, right? Yeah, probably. Um, probably. Not that there isn't such a thing, but that's, that, so, that's so specific. It though. really it, it's yeah. it. It's crazy. It's it's crazy. It's what a crazy it's, coincidence. What if it's one of those things where, like, you know, I don't know. I mean, I can't give you a personal example. Uh, I do not remember. I used to write a dream journal, but not anymore. Um, yes, I had a dream journal. Um, <laughs> where uh, sometimes you dream something so chaotic or insane or something even that's like um, something that looks familiar but is different or feels very different. Yeah. And who knows? You dismiss it. What if it's one of those things where, like, he tries some crazy thing up off the coast of New Zealand, something like that. He imagined what New Zealand might look like in this dream or whatever. Yeah. And it makes gives him the idea. He sees the giant gaze of the Cthulhu. And he starts writing. Right? Like, how to... To get it right feels like there's some sort of, like power at play it really does using him not even maybe not intentionally maybe that's just like he and he just carried it forward like he got the baton passed by accident like maybe he just like the real information is this point nemo off the coast of this and this creature sounds like this and the rest he just took it off the rest is all completely made up he just thought of this wild idea yeah. of cthulhu and the uh, and the city of what Ray Raylan? Relia. Relia, sorry. yeah um, I just like the idea of like where this guy could have possibly come up with this, knowing that he was never there, didn't have any resources, right, and was destitute when before his work was even acknowledged. You know? That's why people, when this bloop came out, they were screaming Lovecraft, Lovecraft, you know, and there's, Cthulhu. There's also a uh, I don't remember the name of it, and I never played it, but there's this game that I saw a trailer for once. I almost bought it that day because it looks so cool. It has a Cthulhu. It clearly is inspired by his works, and it's about a lost under underwater city oh. that this guy discovers. Or I don't know if you're the main character that discovers it, or if you're a citizen of this place. But it's like long dead, and you described earlier about dead bodies being all over the place. Yeah, it's city. It was like it's that. a literal city he's of the like, dead. He's in the city of the dead, 
and it looks like crustaceans and like everywhere because it was on the water. Yeah. Um, and he's this guy is like it's a puzzle game, so you have to go through a lot of like weird puzzles to figure out how everything works in order to get to the next level or whatever. And along the way, you see like these remnants of like a massive creature watching over him. It's super weird, and the, every time you talked about this stuff uh, along the way in this episode, uh, made me think of that game just on that trailer alone, which I have not played. Yeah. And I do not remember the name of it. I'll figure it out. Maybe. Someone out there screaming it. Right. Right. <laughs> so it just looked interesting. I hope I'm right. If you if you know what I'm talking about, write us in. Yeah. Uh, Contact at chicagoghostpodcast.com. But I also, I'll figure it out if you ask me next time. I'll, you know. <laughs> Episode 104. 104, yeah. I, 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 I really believe there could be stuff down there that we have no, no, no clue that it exists. Yeah. It happens a few times a year. Man. The other one I was going to include in here was the Montauk Monster. Mon- yeah, yeah. The one that washed up ashore on, uh, 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 on the beaches of Montauk, New York, a few years ago. I mean... No one knows what the fuck this thing is. Still? But there it is, still. Well, still, because the body disappeared. No one knows what happened to this creature. And uh, there's pictures out there. Just Google Montauk Monster. There's stuff down there we have no fucking clue about. Yeah. And uh, You'd be surprised. If it, yeah. if it lives in this Point Nemo, where humanity likely, according to scientists, never visited. It exists, but it's so remote, no one ever visited. It's perfect untouched habitat. Yeah, but what is it eating? You know, because the Pacific Gyre, uh, there's no food there. So wh- how does it? Well, you think of this. You think of this sound, which could be like a, a, like a scream, a scream, or a right. or a or a mating sound, dying or a mating sound, or it could be awakening. Who the fuck knows? Awakening. That's probably worse. No. I, yeah. I, I, you know, what I thought it could be it was that it's calling. Um, it's calling its prey in. Like compelling other creatures that it would eat to his location, oh, like a trap. Yeah, maybe. yeah. Like faking to be like a call. Like I don't know, kind of like what the opposite and what a lion's roar does to put fear into others. Yeah, we about that. In some we episode. we did. Yeah. We talked about that. In, uh, kind of like the opposite of that, but instead of like forgot. scaring them away, it gives them like this impulsion to follow it, kind of like a Pied Piper feel. It could be that. I mean, there's some creatures that do do that. I don't know. 100% what they might be but yeah, yeah. I mean, also like it's so the ocean's so dirty I mean it's so insane there's so much crap down there God knows what could mutate also like it could be like it used to be this and now it's this combined with some fungal coral manifestation mm. you know I'm not saying man made I'm just saying you know, just like through evolution ocean, Right. Evolution of funk. Yeah, and now it's a new thing altogether, and it's somehow lived past its prime. It's still alive, and, and it's asexual or whatever. It doesn't matter. You know, yeah. So many ideas. What about the upsweep? The one that keeps coming back seasonally. Right. That science can't necessarily explain. What the hell is that? Is it is, is it that alien the, beacon? The, the yeah, the alien beacon. The awakening. It's waking up every the time alarm. at this. It's season. The alarm. Yeah, you're uh-huh. right. <laughs> That's the way it goes. <laughs> Gotta get up and cause some havoc. Right. Some Leviathan like havoc. It it's just it's crazy what could potentially be down there. Yeah. And it's so hard for us to get down. I mean we can get down there. But it's it's very difficult and very expensive to send ourselves down there. Yeah, I I wonder if what's is do you think it is as expensive as like Seeing our, the moon, going to the moon? Probably more so. I mean, it sucks. It sucks, it sucks. That's Probably sucks. more so. You know, I mean, obviously I understand the pressure and all that. Like, you were saying earlier at the opening about the, your personal, you know, you want to be an ocean archer. Yes, or, yeah. Marine biologist, like George Costanza. Um, <laughs> That's right. Really. But um, I, I never, never felt that way about it. But I've always liked uh, being in water. And to a certain point in my life, like maybe late teens, early twenties, I, every time I would go in a pool or an ocean or a beach or whatever, like I would instantly, as soon as I go on the water, just to you know, fun around, play around, whatever. Yeah. Um, I would like instantly feel like not right, like something would pop, and if I go deeper and deeper. So are you a, a sufferer of thus? Uh, <laughs> what is it called the uh, the lessophobia? No, I don't have a phobic. I, I love the water. Okay. I would love to go into any ocean right now. I would love to go to Point Nemo if I can uh, be okay going and coming back and 
have enough water. You might not come back. That's well, the problem. I, well, you know, like I would go there if I could. Yeah. That's my point. Fine, I won't come back. I'll just have all my affairs in order. <laughs> um, but the thing is, I, w- I would go there right now if I could. Uh, obviously, I can't. But I'm not afraid of it. But always, the water has never been my best friend. You know what I'm saying? Like naturally, it always felt. I love the water, but I just don't. So I don't know. It's not a, it's affects me. It affects me. It's 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 so I I'm a person who loves the ocean, loves the water. I was in um I don't know, it could have been Jamaica, it could have been like St. Thomas or something like that. And I was wave running, right? Yeah. I'm, I'm out in the ocean, rah, I'm just ripping through, you know, God knows how fast on top of the water. Mm-hmm. And I stopped and I sat on the wave runner, way out in the middle of the ocean and way too far from land, further than I should have been. And all of a sudden, and I'm just, I, I killed the engine, I'm just sitting there, and I'm like, this is awesome, right? Yeah. All of a sudden, this rogue waves come out of nowhere, and it, it hits me, yeah. and it knocks me off the, the wave runner. Yeah. I don't think I've ever been so scared in my life, because instantly, I saw in my mind this massive mouth coming up from below me. and it was, uh, a, it was a different kind, it wasn't like a traditional yeah, no, it was a, a, a nasty wave. This just came out of nowhere. It was calm, totally calm ocean. That's I'm so just weird. sitting there enjoying it. I, I never and had next thing, yes, experience with the ocean before. yes, and next thing you know, this rogue wave comes out of nowhere and just poof, I mean, hits me broadside, and I fly off yeah. the the wave runner, and I'm in the middle of the ocean by myself. <laughs> wave runner's kind of floating away, yeah, and just in my that I, I might have had that. What was it called? The uh, Thess. Uh, that moment mesothelioma I don't know what the fuck it was the phobia that in that moment yeah. I had it because I just pictured this massive mouth coming up from underneath me and just swallowing me that's what they think is down here making those no, down there making movie, the noises uh, you think I think of that movie Moana have you seen that movie no you have kids Disney movie Moana I've never seen it what I know a lot of people love it I've never seen it it's really good anyway the ocean has like a, a mind of its own yeah. And like it would like just for comic relief, like you know, grab the chicken from the boat with like a water, like a water gloop, grabbing <laughs> gloop. Up and like moving the boat with it, and you know, showing the girl the leaves on the bottom. You know, it, it moves by itself. It's a sentient water. You know, oh, has this like nice look to it. It kind of feels like that, but but sinister. Yeah. For you. Yeah. Um. Yeah, that's fucked up though. I mean, I. I was scared. I, mean, I, I was scared. Area, though. I, I have the Great Lakes, sure, but that's not the same at all. It's not. It's, it's really not. Way, it's way not. I've been to the ocean on both sides. I've been in uh, Pacific and Atlantic, but like, young, I was too young. I have only was there for like a day or two. It was never, like I never experienced it like that, no. No. You know? It was freaky. No. It was freaky for those couple seconds. Oh, and I had to swim to the fucking wave runner and get back on it and get the hell out of the dodge. Yeah. You and my family who are uh, they live in Mexico, who I visit or used to visit way more often, they're also in landlocked. They're not on any coast in the middle of Chihuahua or the middle of Durango, and it's like far from any ocean. No. So yeah, uh, it's never had that much experience. Yeah. Who knows, man? Did you like it? Yeah, I think the bloop is cool. It has like a good. It's almost like a great sequel to the Vostok thing because we were talking about kind of yeah deep deep creatures right, right? Yeah. yeah there's some creature stuff going on in late 2019 here I think so yeah I think so I really thought you were gonna bring out another serial killer I don't know why oh but no this were, is totally different yeah, right way different <laughs> that's cool stuff like this it, it interests me I love it was a great time researching this stuff you could. and there's so much more you know, that like, we can talk about freaky freaky time. Uh, researching this one? No. no. No, this was a pleasure. Yeah. This one was fun. Yeah. I knocked it out in about a day and a half. Good, good. So, uh... Hey, look at that. Good. Yeah, right? And, uh... It probably would have been better if I wasn't drinking. Uh... Do you think it was... You drinking while you were researching? Do you think it was okay? Now. now. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I can't wait to hear how this sound quality comes out. Dude, I don't know either. I am... Com- I, am a- I took the thing out because I kept hearing the damn static. But, uh, yeah, we're going to have to eliminate the static. Yeah, I mean, there's a way. The sound of silence. Yeah, sound of silence, right. Um, so, but it was, just, it was just so unbearing, you know, for us. To out. But, uh, yeah, I, I hope it sounds good. I mean, it looks, these wavelengths are going all over the place, so I assume it would sound good, or a version of good. <laughs> Goodish. Goodish. We'll keep working on it, listeners. Right, we're well, going to keep working on it. it. They already know how good or not good it is. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'll have it soundproof next recording. Well, that's uh, that's the bloop, man. That's what I got. It's a cool bloop. I never heard of the bloop before you. I mean, I, 
when I started listening to it, when you showed me, because you told me a few days ago what we were doing, um, it gave me, you know, some other, you know, like, oh, if you like this, or, you know, alternative research, or people also looked over this, and some of those look familiar for sure, like the thing in New York, the thing, um, the, a different New Zealand thing, I think. When you say New York, you mean the Montauk? The Montauk. Thing. Montauk Monster, right. yeah. Yeah, I was like, oh man, I can see a lot of... Maybe I should stick a like picture. a lot of those samples everywhere, like sprinkled throughout the world every year, yeah. or every couple months, or every couple uh, five-year gaps, you know? Yeah, it's definitely something there. I, I, everything can't be explained with just like, that's, uh, you know, that's an oil rig. Yeah, you know, oh, that's ice. Rig. That's, uh, that's ice cracking, you know, every single time. Ice cracking for 3,000 miles. I mean, that's a hell of an ice crack. It really, yeah, and when the <laughs> largest planet... <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> oh. Yeah, I did it. So an ice crack heard for 3,000 miles when the largest animal mm-hmm. in history yeah. can only project sound 1,000 miles. Yeah. Come on, man. Come on. Uh, makes me also think of the uh, organism 46B. <laughs> yeah, like Vostok. Yeah, kind of funny when you were talking about the squid. Was giving examples of giant, giant squids. Yeah, uh, get, get that made me think of that too. I mean, yeah, because they're in the warm waters or the both. I think they're in both. In both. I mean, they they survive so much. They can put up with so much. They're, they're the cockroach of the ocean. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know, a cockroach will survive atomic blasts. And yeah. And uh, well, not maybe all of them, but yeah, most of them. Like you think of the rats, cockroaches are the top two things that will survive almost anything we do to this planet. Maybe octopuses are that for the ocean. You know. Like, they'll survive any fucking thing. You know, dolphins will die, for sure. Whales yeah. will die, for sure. And, I don't know. But, I mean, just, just look up, you know, the, the angler fish. Look up the fang tooth fish. Yeah. Look up the, the, fr- one, like the frilled shark. Mm-hmm. Um, the vampire squid. Mm-hmm. I mean, these are all things that live at the deepest, darkest depths and of the they, ocean. And some of those scientists have to come up with fun names for them. Yeah, vampire yeah. Vampire squid. Can you imagine being the, the guy vampire squid, name? the fang tooth, yeah. the, you know. It, they're, they're down there. So there could be more. There has to be. Yep. I mean, there has to be. How much? We're still not even 50% discovered down there. Dude, it was more than 80% undiscovered. Yeah, yeah. Wasn't it? Yeah. I don't believe you. I just, I just know it's more than half of it. It's undiscovered. I wasn't sure what the rest was. Yeah, I, yeah. now I gotta go check. It's insane. Um, yeah, eighty percent is unmapped, unobserved, and unexplored. It's the whole fucking thing, pretty much. Yeah. You know, it's feel, you know, it's, it's, it's made me think of something else. I was trying to think about what you said earlier about we need resources and we need money to fucking go out there. Not to you know, not only space but the ocean and or even like. The inside of a volcano or cave systems that we haven't seen in forever, right? Right. So many things that yet to be looked at and researched and whatnot. Um, I almost think, like, I know as a world thing, it's not like a big problem because we have real fish to fry, primarily climate change, or like, you know, you think of political problems or hunger yeah. and starvation and feeding people that are thick, whatever. Yeah. All these real problems for sure. I'm not saying that they should not take a side burner for this. I almost feel like as a world thing, we should give like these missions to like countries that don't have that problem, like smaller countries. Give Lux- Luxembourg, <laughs> the, Luxembourg the resources to study the oceans. Have, yeah. Give uh, give what's another pretty cool e- not Egypt, um, <laughs> but Egypt give a different fun. country that isn't you know it's more stable but not too big that's gonna cost like fucking mayhem. Not China, not America. Like give them okay, go look at space. Research everything you got on interstellar travel. Hmm. Go nuts. Here's the money that we're all saving here. Here's our scientists. You know. That's like, interesting. Focus on that. You know, you're doing good. We have wars to win. Whatever. Right. right? Yeah. That we say we have to win. You know, if we're really gonna bitch and moan about it, it's just let's just delegate a little. You know? I like the delegation's down. good. Right. I think they'd be down for that. Send, go down there 10,000 feet. You'll be fine. Yeah, go find Nemo. Don't worry. Go find Nemo. Right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know. Well, keep searching, listeners. Mm-hmm. I say so. And with that, Let's go. Oscar, take us home. Please. Time for whiskey.
shit. I even heard the manufacturer that made the e juice in there. <laughs> So we can't get while we're recording. We can't get away with this thing. No, not really. Wow. I mean, I mean, honestly, that you've heard it in the show before. They can hear it sometimes. But yeah, I would have to like, like I would have to pre prep, like prep it, like I would have to sit like this already, and like. <laughs> <laughs> The chain is so pullable. Uh, I'm just pulling it. I, I get told that all the time, even Do at you work. Really? Yes. No. Not that exact phrase, but same meaning. Like, yeah, really? It's like so, it's so easy to fuck with me. Yeah. All, all, everyone fucks with me at work. <laughs> I'm sorry. I thought I was like, everyone oh, fucks with me. That. No, <laughs> no. Damn. Apparently, I'm pretty easy to trigger. Nice. Triggered. Triggered. A few things I like about the old days. Well, it's funny because you watch old TV shows, yeah. The Men, yeah. even at dinner. At dinner. Shirt Ch- and tie. Shirt and tie. Me at dinner, half dead. Half dead. <laughs> Me at dinner, it's like on my bed and playing board. Like, oh, chewing like a chip. Crumbs everywhere. Yeah, yeah. Dude, I've been in, I've been, mess. I've been in hotels. Yeah. Right? Because it's just me. Right. It's just you. <laughs> Finish my work, order a pizza, mm-hmm. wings, sitting on the bed, watching Netflix, food on my chest, Dago tea. And I, like, Who's the boss? <laughs> and I, and I stop and I look at myself. <laughs> and like you disgusting motherfucker. <laughs> That's funny. Oh my god. Yeah, this is <sighs> the old days you'd be calling in an escort. That's yeah, it, in the old days guys were in fucking suits at the dinner table. Yeah. You know. But I, uh I've always liked that idea. It, it comes with that self-image thing that a lot of people raved about in the 90s and early 2000s. So what do you mean? That whole self-improvement thing. Starts with an image. Oh, uh, like yeah, yeah. Something yeah. about that that always stuck around. I'm not saying I got it from there, but maybe it is over there. Um, but yeah, I've always liked the idea. Like you, you dress for the, you dress the best. You do the best work. You do the best everything. Yeah. So it kind of goes with that in my in my fantasy. It's like the old saying: yeah. you, you dress for the position you want. Yes. Yeah, not like what you that. have, what like you that. want. Just right. Like that. But uh, yeah. So I, I got a I got a splurge on a lot of clothes. So you're gonna be visiting his website a lot, huh? Yeah, Good. yeah. Because, uh, so for example, he had like this really nice blue patterned, I think it was a pinstripe suit, but on the inside, so you could customize the inside too. Oh, yeah. He had like a maroon paisley pattern on the in- inside of the. Oh man, I'm I'm getting drunk already. Yeah. Uh, on the inside of the, so you open you the sound jacket. Like Rick Sanchez from Rick and Morty. <laughs> Oh yeah, and so you open up the jacket. You go to take the jacket off, and this red hits you. This paisley red pattern. It looked so great. And they'll they'll I kind of want this. I kind of want this. It's. It, I'm telling you, man. iTaylor.com. I don't know if Oscar's recording out takes, but iTaylor.com. I've been going for 28 minutes. Um, and then they'll embroider it for you. So this jacket made for Jason Knight. Yeah, it's. It, you could customize the collar. You customized the. All the other kids wanted to be cops or firemen, and I wanted to be an oceanographer. I think you told me that before. Yeah, I was fascinated with the ocean and the creatures that live there. I kept extending. <laughs> <laughs> now that you stopped, I'm gonna show you something else to do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you literally, you vape, you vape the vape, right. and then just huffed the smoke. 